So I let's see. Can we? <laughs> People coming in or no? Is that just me? I see. All right. Yep. The numbers keep going up. Welcome. Okay. Everyone. <laughs> We're so glad you're here a touch early so you can check your technology and settle in after what's probably been a long day, a long start to the month. Um, a quick reminder, if you don't already have something to take notes with, this would be a great time to find that. So uh, we're glad you're here. And just a few moments, we'll be getting right to our, our content. That's right. <laughs> yes. And shortly, I want to wait until exactly seven, actually, to get people to keep coming <laughs> in. But <laughs> yeah, but we're glad if you're here a touch early. This is wonderful. Great to see everyone. Get our notepads ready and questions as well. We'll kind of fill you in about um, maybe the best way to jump in with the Q&A. And um, we'll right. get started in just a few moments. Right. Hmm. I know. It's all, um, hopefully everybody's able to get all their technology going in this heat wave that we're all having. So <laughs> yeah. hopefully everyone's air conditioning and able to relax and sit back and enjoy the show. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, stay cool. So um, it's not quite time for the warm beverages, I suppose. So I uh, filled back up on my iced tea. I've got a little raspberry mint going on. Feels like <laughs> summer. So it uh, felt like it called for a nice iced tea. <laughs> One of the first question in the Q&A is, will this be recorded? Yes, this is being recorded. So that's great. And then uh, we can let everyone know where to see it. Yes. So definitely. if you'd like to see it again or someone you know might enjoy it, but they weren't here live, we can give you all that information about how to find the recording. Great question. That's right. So if you're newer to a webinar, we really want to invite you in. It may be a little bit of a different style than you're used to. You can see and hear us, but we can't see or hear you. Um, uh, but don't worry, we know you're there. So I can see everyone's <laughs> names. And um, so that's perfect. And then please do um, use the chat if you'd like to say hi. Um, jump in, say hello. Let us know what you've been working on. Are you looking forward to this evening's program? Um, so jump in and say hi in the chat if you'd like. And if this is a newer uh, way of joining us on Zoom, if you're not as familiar, oh, there's Pat in the chat. Hi. Um, you can see the Q&A feature. So um, there should be a Q&A button and you can certainly ask your question there. But if for any reason, you know, the Q&A feature is, is not quite um, something you're familiar with and you prefer chat, you can certainly pop them there too. Uh, Colleen says, looking forward to it. Oh, me too. I've been counting down to this program, Colleen. I absolutely love um, getting to join you at our wonderful library. And, and here you are. So good to see you. Anne's here from Eckertown. Oh, that's lovely. Here we are. And Joanne says, hello. Jill says, hi. There's Jean in the chat and Lori from Tewksbury, Danvers. Oh, this is wonderful. Apparently there's clutter everywhere. So you're not alone. <laughs> Certainly not alone. We have well over 100 attendees here already. Uh, Peg's here from Stoneham. Wonderful. Gladys, Virginia. Hi, Cindy. Oh, this is great. And we've got a friend, uh, Pat's over in Medford. Wonderful. Helen Langhorn. Fantastic. Yep. Clutter everywhere. Laura Groton and uh, Linda, New Hampshire. Good to see you all. Welcome, welcome. Oh, this is uh, a lot of fun. We've got Ellen chiming in. Patricia's here. There's Donna in the chat. Thanks everyone for jumping in the chat and saying hi, June from Arlington Heights. Oh, Eleanor, hello. Hi, Yvette, Ellen, Peter. Good to see you. We're going to be coming up on the hour. There's Jennifer from Groton jumping in the Q&A. Good to see you. Diane over in Burlington. Hi, Elaine. Donna, it's good to see everyone. 
And there's Diane with a double N. Hello, Mary. Oh my goodness. Hello, friends. So this may be the first time I'm getting to meet you, or maybe we've met before and you're back for another little nudge, some new ideas, um, but whatever brought you tonight, we're really glad you're here. I'm going to uh, hand it over and uh, then I'll get this back and, and we'll be well on our way. But thanks so much for having us and welcome everyone. Great. Well, you've taken over my intro a little bit, but from the Chelmsford Public Library, we want to welcome everybody. This is um, a really exciting program that we have for you tonight. It's called Time to Spare, How to Declutter Your Home, Calendar, and the To-Do List. I know my to-do list is quite long all the time, so I'm looking forward to some, some tips. <laughs> that will be great. So without further ado, this is Jamie Novak, and she's going to give us a great presentation. And if you have any questions or along the way, you can put them in the chat or the Q&A on the bottom of the Zoom. Um, but otherwise, enjoy the talk and welcome. Thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> We're so glad to be here. My goodness, that's exactly right. Time to spare. I'll start off by sharing what might be a somewhat staggering statistic. And that is that the average person today is wasting, are you ready for this? 52 minutes a day looking for lost or misplaced things. So if you'd like to get some time back in your day, if it feels like, yep, yeah, 52 minutes feels about right. Maybe some days you excel and 52 minutes is nothing. You feel like you waste more time. Um, it really is looking for lost or misplaced things. Where did I put my key? I can't find my left shoe, all the things. And so we will strive tonight to give you strategies for solving the conundrum of our to-do list that's never ending. If you tend to procrastinate, I've got a few strategies for you. And we're gonna solve, hopefully, the hot spots of clutter. I've identified seven of them and I cannot wait to share them with you. So are you ready to get started? Give us a why or a yes in the chat if you are ready to hear these strategies and clear the clutter. Oh, it just feels like that back to school time. Yes, that fresh start to fall and we are just ready to go. It's a perfect time of year to come in to our home after maybe having some summer fun, being out and about. And then you look around and you're like, where did all this stuff come from? Uh, the piles in the corner, the things on flat surfaces, all the stuff. So hopefully we're gonna solve those clutter hotspots for you. Before we jump into that, I just would like to invite you to join me for a little written exercise, if you will. So if you have a pen and paper nearby, uh, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, a piece of scrap paper will do, uh, your notebook would be fine as well, but I'm going to share with you a little strategy that I use when my mind is cluttered. So a lot of times we talk about the physical things, but we sort of um, overlook the mental, right? right? We only have like so much bandwidth before our, our minds are overwhelmed, just like our homes can feel. And so I'd love to share with you this little download exercise that I personally do. And um, if you've never done it before, I think you might really enjoy it. It's a way of kind of getting all that stuff down on paper so it feels much more manageable. This is something that I'll do when I have trouble falling asleep because all my thoughts are racing. If I simply feel overwhelmed during the day, or it's just a great practice to try maybe almost on a weekly basis to keep you on track with all the to-dos. And gosh, does life have a lot of to-dos? So let's jump in with this little written exercise. The great news is I'm not gonna grade it. You can't do it wrong. So please do join us. Um, here we go. All right, this little download is the idea of taking all the thoughts that might be rolling around in your mind, things you have to follow up on, things you have to do, things you have to buy, all the things, and we're gonna get them down on paper in no particular order. Your spelling doesn't really matter, penmanship, doesn't really matter as long as you can read what you've written. Um, the order that you write them in, what you wanna do first, doesn't matter. Right now, we really just wanna get them down on a piece of paper. So I'm just gonna set a timer for about a minute, a minute and a half, and I'm gonna invite you to join me as we do a little download. Then we'll do the next step of, well, what do I do once I've written it down? So right now, our very first step, I'm gonna set a timer and I'll invite you to join me 
Just write everything down in no particular order. So if you're ready, let's get started in three, two, one, and start writing. I'll be fairly quiet so you can concentrate. Thirty more seconds. Capture those thoughts. You're just tuning in and you're wondering why you're not hearing anything. Give us 20 seconds and I'll be right back to the program. 15 seconds, everyone. You're going to hear that buzzer chime in five, four, three, two, one, and there we are. There's that buzzer chirping away in the background. So if you tuned in while we were in the middle of our little written exercise, um, I'll recap it for you. For those of you that are just completing it, capture your final thoughts. So this is a little something that I do when I'm feeling overwhelmed personally. There's a lot going on and it's, I think, a great way of making your tasks feel way more manageable. So we just took about one minute and wrote down all the thoughts about the things we have to do and follow up on and the calls we have to make and all the tasks we want to accomplish. And uh, we did, didn't do it in any particular order. So we spent about uh, one minute doing that. So if you tuned in and we had already started, please um, go ahead and, and start filling in your paper. And then from there, what I'm going to invite you to do is to kind of look over the um, list that you've created and start to find some common themes uh, start to group, right? Uh, just like you would group things together when you're decluttering, like these are all the t-shirts, these are all the shorts. We're just going to kind of group those tasks. So things to follow up on and kind of maybe circle those and put squares around the things that you have to do and maybe a star next to the emergency urgent things and maybe a little check mark next to the things you need to buy. Start to maybe move the list around, um, Get it in some sort of an order that it feels like you're putting some common themes together, some broad categories uh, to do, to buy, to follow up on, to declutter. Maybe you've got a few different areas you're looking to tackle. So as we're starting to kind of group these tasks together, what you might start to realize is something that came to my mind when I did this for the very first time. And that was instead of just a random to-do list that's just filled with a bunch of things that are in no particular order, when I sort of grouped my tasks together, it felt way more manageable. You know, if I'm going to make one phone call, it's usually easier to just make two more. But if they were staggered all throughout my list, I wouldn't see them at one time. But when I grouped them under phone call, really easy to just make those phone calls, which is about what I spent 30 minutes this afternoon doing. They were kind of follow-up calls that had been lingering. So as you start to see these common themes, now I'll invite you to take that next step. And that is to really circle, highlight, choose three tasks that are kind of waving at you from that list going over here, me first. Uh, it might be something that's date related. For example, you have to send out a card. Um, and of course you'd be late sending the card if it's someone's birthday. So you might start there. You might see that something else is date sensitive. You need to make an appointment, something that looks like a lot of fun to do or something you've been putting off for a really long time and you just feel great to do it. So our three items on that list kind of waving at you, calling out you like over here, over here. And sometimes it's very obvious. Sometimes you just choose any three. So we're going to choose three. And then what you might have guessed is our next step is of those three, which one do you want to start with? 
Again, sometimes the date and it being date sensitive, that requires us to do it first. Sometimes it's the one that's most enjoyable. Sometimes it's the one that feels the most difficult. And even if you can't get the whole thing done, can you take a first step? What would that look like? And then now that we've narrowed it down to the top three and we've selected one, what's the first step you need to take and when will you take it? And then can we get that on your calendar, set an alarm, do a sticky note, like when are you going to tackle this? And finally, once you've taken that first step or tackled that project, is there any sort of a reward that you'd like to plan for? And that may just look like the satisfaction of a job well done, and that's all the reward you need. It might look like time on social media, an episode of your favorite show, um, a little corner of a piece of chocolate, your favorite coffee, a walk, time in the garden, whatever that is for you. You might want to set up something to look forward to that will then recharge your battery for the next one on the list, because there's always something on the list. So hopefully this little download exercise, if you've never done it before, you've done it in a different way, maybe it's really starting to sink in for you that, gosh, if I compartmentalize and batch my tasks and group them by common themes, and you might even go so far as to look at your actual calendar and say on Mondays, I'm going to take care of my phone calls. On Tuesdays, I'm going to do my errands, which in fact, Tuesdays tend to be the days that are least busy in the store. So you can park the closest, get through cashier even faster, all the things. So Tuesday may be that day. And again, by theming it, it's just like, well, that's what I do this day. So I hope this little download exercise for those of you that were able to join us, um, you've enjoyed it. And maybe it's a new way of looking at your list. One of the things that's probably on all of our lists is a little bit of decluttering and most especially those hot spots. And I've identified seven top clutter hot spots, and I'm going to share them with you now. And maybe you are going to add to your list of, oh, yes, I want to get that one done or no, that one doesn't really apply to me, but it sparked another idea. And so let's start a little list. And again, under that common theme of declutter or tidy or organize or straighten, whatever you know category title you want to give it, we can start to list these items. And then when you're in declutter mode, we're just going to go through the list. And we'll be talking about procrastination in just a little while because sometimes we put off the decluttering just a little bit. So uh, let's jump in with number one on our list. And it involves magnets, magnets, and all the things that might be on the front of your fridge, the side of your fridge, the top of your refrigerator. It depends on how your kitchen's designed. You may have a recessed refrigerator. Yours may be open to air on top. You may store things up there, which is generally not a good idea just because it gets so hot and things can fall behind. Um, but you may have decorative things or boxes of cereal. And then the side of the fridge, if you have a fridge that's magnetized, you may have magnets and papers. And does anyone have like those business cards that come pre-made and they're magnets, but then it's for a business that you don't frequent or you already have the number in your phone or you just simply don't need it. And so we're talking fridge, fridge side, fridge front, fridge top. It's the refrigerator. And so that's sort of that um, visual noise, right? So you're in the kitchen and maybe cabinets are closed. There's a few things on the countertop, you know, maybe a few more than a few more things on the countertop. Um, but when you kind of turn to that fridge and there's just all this stuff, it's hard to feel calm because everywhere you look, you're trying to process what that is, like all the signs and the magnets. And plus, if they fall off, then they get stuck to the bottom of the fridge and it's not as easy to clean the fridge because you've got to move all the stuff off. So fridge is um, number one. It's that clutter hotspot that we often overlook. Let us know in the chat if fridge is a top one for you. You can give us a, a fridge in the fridge, put a fridge or an F or a yes in the chat and let us see. We have a couple of questions coming in in the chat and we'll certainly circle back to those for a more formal Q&A at the end. So Galena, hold on. Um, we'll be getting an answer for you on that. 
Pat's going, yes, refrigerator for sure. Sarah says, nope, not so much with the fridge. Now, I love that Sarah's just being honest and saying, not an issue for me. So here's the thing. If that's not it, can we substitute in another task in the kitchen? Uh, so inside and out, Mary says, not only the outside, but the inside as well. Um, now, Shresh has got those travel magnets all over the fridge. And if that is like important to you, if you love that it's set up as almost decoration, fantastic. If you love the magnets, but you don't love them on the fridge, think about moving them to maybe like a bulletin board or a shadow box. So it becomes a piece of wall art more so than the fridge, which for me, when I have the magnets on the side, they tend to get dusty, greasy. And again, we're losing time by having extra things to clean. So up, oh, Johanna says magnets on the sidewall and it works pretty well. So, so many great ideas coming in. I love that everyone's going, yeah, this is for me or nope, I'm gonna substitute in another project. So we're starting with the fridge. That's number one on common clutter hotspots. And number two is going right to that utensil drawer with 17 wooden spoons six garlic presses, three pizza wheels, um, spatulas and pancake turners and salad tongs and all the things. And I know we need them, but I'm not sure how many we need to have accessible right all the time. So when we think about either a crock that might be on the kitchen counter or that drawer that's usually very easy to access, it's sort of like that prime real estate, right? So the space that you can reach most easily, I like to think of filling that with the things that I use most often. And so what happens is through the year, um, other things land there, right? Especially in a drawer or in a crock, it's really easy. And you know, oh, I stick this here, stick this here, put this in the drawer. And so just a refresh. I know we need a lot of things in the crock or the drawer, especially the utensils we're reaching for all the time when we're cooking, but there's a really good chance there's at least one that's not your favorite. It's flimsy, it's broken, it's warped, it's peeling. Maybe you need to replace it. Maybe you just have too many and they're excess. A lot of times extra utensils come to us when we buy them as a set. So you need one, but it's almost less expensive to buy a set. And so then you end up with two or three in a set that you didn't even need. We can absolutely donate any that are not in great, um, not right for us, but they're still in really good condition. If they're not in great condition, no one wants them. No one should be cooking with them. So let them leave. And you might consider setting up a little back stock, right? So instead of leaving all the wooden spoons of a similar size in the drawer, where then you can't find any when you need them, leave the one or two you reach for most often but then set up a little box or bag or container of the extras so then you can shop from home when you need them. So I think that is uh, maybe something we want to look at. Um, it's our utensil drawer and you know the pizza wheel that just doesn't roll right, um, the bottle opener that's like a little rusty and can't be cleaned. We should not be using these things, but they end up in the way back of the drawer. And so utensil drawer is number two on our list of seven clutter hot spots. So we can go into this one of two ways. We can open up the drawer and say, I'm looking for, give yourself a number, five things, three things, one thing, 10 things to come out of the drawer. And then you're sort of picking and choosing what you might want to trash, recycle, or donate. The other way to do this is if you're brave enough, dump the entire drawer and only replace back the things that you use most often. If you're going to keep it, but you don't use it as often, maybe it doesn't deserve that prime real estate space. And of course, with any drawer, as an organizer, you probably know I'm going to suggest drawer dividers. So whether you actually add drawer dividers, you just use shallow boxes that you already own, um, any way that we can add a few dividers in there, and that's going to really help to keep things from rolling around when you open and close the drawer. So it does Again, contain, compartmentalize. Um, it really might be worth your time and energy. Plus, it just looks really great. If you don't particularly care whether or not those drawer dividers look built in, 
then any color will work for you. If you're looking for a more designer built-in look, then I'd suggest looking for dividers that are the same color as the drawer. So if it's white, a light wood, a darker wood, um, black, metallic, um, I would go with what the drawer is made of, the material, so that it matches and it looks designer and built in. That's a little um, extra strategy. So there you go. All right. Well, we've got our utensils and there's so many comments coming in. You guys have been busy, very busy. We've got Mecca who says been clearing them out. Joanne says, sometimes I think I should save like an extra spoon in the garage just in case I have to stir something out there and then dispose of them. So I think Joanne's really on the right track here. She's storing it where she would use it. So I did find some extra large spoons that would be perfect for planting seedlings, but then they, I wouldn't want them to come back to the kitchen. So instead of just, you know, leaving them in the drawer, I would never remember. I put them with gardening and I think Joanne is spot on there. So great ideas, everyone. Well, that's number two on our list of seven. Before we get to some procrastination ideas, there is going to be a little quiz coming up, so stay tuned. Uh, number three on our list is the clutter catch-all. And you might think, but Jamie, I feel like sometimes my entire home is a clutter catch-all. Like every flat surface is a clutter catch-all. And I totally get that. If you're like, yes, that's true. So here's the thing, clutter catch-all. For me, I often think of it as like a basket, a container, um, something that I've left out saying, oh, I'm only going to put my, you know, something here. And all of a sudden it becomes everything else. A clutter catch-all could look like that, um, little organizer that's meant to go on the wall to hold the mail from the day, but now it's holding everything else but mail or mail from two years ago and other things. So a clutter catch-all could look like a bin or a basket. It could just be the top of a surface, um, but it's that space where it was meant to be just this category and all of a sudden random things got plucked in there. So I had this little decorative box and I set it out. The intention was to put remote controls in it. Anyone want to guess how many remote controls are inside? <laughs> if you guessed zero, you'd be right. Um, but what is inside? A pack of gum. I don't even know how old it is. Um, replacement lights for a strand of holiday lights or, I don't know, garden lights. I uh, don't even know if we still own those. Some Velcro strap organizer, kind of maybe cord organizer. I don't know. One brick toy. And um, one die, but it's not a regular die. It goes to a game. But where's the rest of the game? We have to figure it out. So sometimes we have to do a little detective work. Um, if you have a clutter catch-all that kind of looks like this, then um, you know the one I mean. And my best advice is just remove the catch-all. Move the basket, move the bin, move the tray, and just don't use it. Because it's really hard to stay on top of it, especially if you share your home with others, right? Then everyone's piling, oh, I'll just put it here for now. And then two weeks, two years later, it's still there along with everything else. So clutter catch-all is number three on our list. And if you're kind of making a list with us for the ones that really apply and where you want to focus some time and you go, oh, Number three, clutter catch-all. I'm going to invite you to be even more specific than that. Exactly which catch-all, especially if you have more than one. Which one? What are you going to do first? Where are you going to start? Because, you know, after our time together this evening, maybe you're really going to feel motivated to do a little something and you turn to your notes and go, okay, catch-all. What do I do? I don't know what to do. I'll figure it out later. And then we go do something else. So when you're super specific, I think you're going to see the best results. Um, Susan, I think you are right. Uh, Susan says left, right, center. Uh, and she's right. There's the L, <laughs> there's the R, and there's the C. You're spot on. Okay. I just have to find the rest of the game. But um, that is a fun game. So thank you. <laughs> it's wonderful. All right. Well, here we go. We're going to move right into number four on our list, and that is the entryway. So sometimes one or more of your clutter catch-alls actually are in the entryway, 
But in the entryway, now we also have all the other things. Everyday essentials, like um, if you have a puppy that you get walked, you've got the dog leash, then you've got sunglasses, and then you've got employee IDs, and then you've got loose change and wallets and everyday tote bags, and then shoes and maybe backpacks and all the things. And they just tend to pile up in the entryway. So one of the best solutions for an entryway is a landing zone, a landing zone. It's a space where bags that are coming in from the store have a place to go. Reusable bags that you need to take back out have a place to go. Things that you need to leave with in the morning have a place to be stored. If you don't wear shoes indoors or you wear indoor shoes indoors, then you need a place for outdoor shoes. So then we've got backpacks and keys and all the things. And so if we designate, um, and it depends on, you know, I say entryway, I in no way mean that all of us have like a traditional foyer or entryway. We may come in through a mudroom. You might have a garage. You might open your front door and it opens right into the first room. Uh, could be the dining room, the kitchen, the living room. Um, so it just depends on, on the layout of your space, you know, a studio apartment, um, you know, three bedroom home or anything that we're working with. But maybe you can carve out a little spot when you first walk in the door. This could look like reorganizing and moving a piece of furniture that you currently have that would work better in the entryway. Again, space is going to be the thing. So a baker's rack, like from the kitchen, it's got all the wire racks. It usually has S hooks for hanging things. That could be great. Maybe you have a closet nearby and you can sort of give up some or all of the closet space to actually, you know, put spaces in there for what people can put things, right? This goes here, your wallet goes here, almost like lockers, if you will. But even something as simple as a bench that lifts up for storage inside, right? The lid lifts up, then it's closed, but it's contained, but it's right there where you need it. I just simply moved a shallow, uh, a sort of short bookcase and it has like three little shelves plenty of room for the things that are coming and going. And then on the side, I put those hooks that are kind of like those no damage hooks. And so we've got the dog leash and the keys and all the things. And then everyone has a tray on top for their everyday stuff that comes out of their pockets and they pick it up and walk out the door. So entryway, landing zone, see if you can maybe reconfigure or just simply clear out. And if you have way too many shoes, um, especially as we're swapping out seasons, don't forget, DSW Shoe Store accepts shoes for um, donation. They collect for souls for souls. So if you'd like to get some of your shoes out to DSW, that means you're going to have to put them in a bag, get the bag of shoes to your local DSW Shoe Store. Um, anyone can bring in shoes. If you are a rewards member, they'll give you points for one pair every day. You can bring in more. Sometimes there's a limit of 12. Sometimes it doesn't really matter. They'll take a whole bag, but they're only going to give you points for one pair. So if points is important, just know that. And you want to have them in the car ready to go for every time you're out there. All right. So we've got our fridge front and our utensils and our catch-all. Now we've got the entryway. And how about the next one, the coffee table. So this is where I had the box to put the remotes, but the remotes didn't make it back in the box. Everything else did. So the box will just be gone. And we're looking at the coffee table. So it might be magazines to read. And maybe you realize you'd rather read them at the library and cancel a subscription, or you'd like to read them digitally. Um, or new magazine in, old magazine out, read or unread, and that might be the new rule. Um, remote controls and everything else that lands on the flat surface, which is typically a clutter catch-all, and this is the coffee table. So if you have just a traditional coffee table that's just sort of legs and then the tabletop, there might be room underneath for some sort of a basket or a container, a bin, a little rolling trolley where toys, video games, extra pillows and throw blankets to get cozy. Not today because I think it's still over 90 degrees, but a different day. Uh, so you can really create the storage without buying a new piece of furniture. If you didn't like that under the coffee table, maybe under an end table. So you can even do an ottoman, again, an ottoman that storage inside. So lift up top, you get seating, you get a footrest, 
and you also get storage, but it's also out of sight. So that's the next one on our list. That's number five, and it's all about the coffee table. The next one on our list is number six, and it is the medicine cabinet. So if you have prescription medication, over-the-counter medication, if you have nail clippers that don't clip or tweezers that don't tweeze, nail files that don't file, it's one of those things where you're busy and you just throw it back in the medicine cabinet to be looked at again later. And right now is that time. So if you'd like to join us, and this is totally optional, but if you'd like to join us for a teeny tiny tidy up, I'll invite everyone that might like to, to leave our webinar running so you don't have to do anything and then step away to maybe the nearest bathroom or a main bathroom. And we're gonna put a few minutes on a timer. And I'll invite you to, if you'd like to jumpstart your decluttering efforts with us right now, head over to the nearest bathroom or the bathroom. And if you're able to take a look at that vanity drawer or the medicine cabinet, and maybe you're gonna find out of date products, maybe they need to be replaced. So keep a running list of anything you need to replace because letting it go is not the time to figure out that, oh my goodness, we don't have any. So we're gonna look at expiration dates on things, which might mean you wanna have your phone handy. You can put it into camera mode and then enlarge it, right? Like you were gonna zoom in to take a photo and that should enlarge the expiration date so that you can read it a little more clearly. Um, sometimes they're teeny tiny or they're on the crimped edge of like a tube practically impossible to read. So if you'd like to join us, we're going to take four minutes right now. So it's just a moment. It's, you know, long enough, I think, to find one or two things to go, not long enough to pull everything out. So probably don't do that. But you can sort of cherry pick the items that need to go. And let's see what you can find. When you come back, join us in the chat um, and let us know what you're working on. We'd love to hear or what you find. Who's going to find the oldest thing? That's going to be really interesting. With four minutes on our timer, I'll invite you to join us. If this is not your thing to get up and do right now, don't worry. Sit tight and we'll resume in four minutes. We'll begin in three, two, one, and go. Timer's ticking. And you're invited to head to carefully walk. It's not a race. So go and you've got all four minutes. If you're not able to get up and work on the bathroom space right now with your phone in your hand, maybe you'll delete emails. Um, in fact, you can delete the email that arrived this evening as a reminder to log on to the program because you're already here. So you can delete that email along with probably so many others. Three minutes and 30 seconds left. Beatrice, we're so glad you're here. I know you sort of have a competition for your time, but don't worry, the program is being recorded and we're going to let you know um, where you can see that. So Lori says timers can be our friends. Oh my goodness, Lori, I completely agree. I get most of my things done by a timed moment. So there we go. Laura says, what do I do if the whole room is a catch-all? We just start in one area. You kind of put blinders on and just focus on that one area that's catching your eye first. Um, if we kind of divert our energy all around, then we just kind of move things, but nothing changes. So Laura, we hear you. Yeah, um, there we go. Two minutes and 50 seconds left. 2.50. As our timer is ticking down, two minutes and 30 seconds. Two minutes to go. Timer's ticking. Are we finding some really old things that can just go? Things you didn't even know you had, things you need to replace, things you need to use. One minute and 35 seconds to go. One 
125. One minute and 10 seconds. Fifty seconds, everyone. Time is ticking. And we're down to thirty five seconds. So see if you can maybe make a decision about one more thing. The face cream you'll never finish, the nail polish color you don't like, the shaving cream, that's just not for you. 20 seconds, you've got this. And we're counting it down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one and we are done. There's our buzzer chirping away in the background, celebrating our win. As a reminder, that was just four minutes. So as Lori said a little earlier that timers can be our friends, I could not agree more. That is one of the key components. Um, and I talk all about it in the intro to keep this toss that, which is my newest book published by Reader's Digest. And I believe you can borrow it from the library. Um, if you like to highlight it, of course, wherever books are sold. But here's the thing. Timers are great, I think, because it gave us four minutes to see what we could do. And we made progress. Now, I truly prefer a 10-minute window on an everyday basis. But we've got a lot to cover. We didn't really have 10 minutes, so we did four. But um, you notice what we accomplished in four minutes. Imagine if you gave yourself 10 minutes a day. Linda tossed out an invisible bandage that expired in 2014 and bonus, a dead wasp. So Linda, congratulations. Uh, that's great. Bonnie found something uh, wanting to list it on eBay. So that is something we could decide to do with um, these items. Yard sales are popular in the fall time listing things or just sharing them. So we had so many great um, questions and things come in in the chat. Just know we've noted them and we'll certainly be circling back. So if you're waiting on your answer, uh, just stay tuned. Uh, join us in chat if you want to let us know what you found. Uh, Diane found heat with just a little bit left in it. So I don't know, I guess use it up or let it go. Um, good, good, good find though. Uh, Joanne found one tube of cream from 2008. So we are, um, everyone's going to see if they can beat Joanne's 2008. Uh, so far, she has the most vintage. And Diane's got an expired prescription from 2014. Life just goes by so fast. And you're like, oh, I think I just bought that. And then you're like, oh, no, wait, I have had that a while. So if it would work for you to keep maybe a permanent marker or some sort of marker in the vanity, um, maybe the medicine cabinet, of course, you don't want, you know, um, those that shouldn't have a marker unattended to have access to it. But if it's um, convenient for you, it might just be something that we start to do as we open up packaged goods and um, makeup and personal care products, just to write the date either that you opened it or the expiration date, either one. Um, but then you'll know, right? Like when did this come in and when should it be leaving? So um, way to go, everyone. So many great finds, well done. And that was, again, four minutes. Imagine what you could accomplish. And what you'll see is that we didn't take everything out because then it's so easy to get overwhelmed. Sidetracked, things get lost. You think you're going to come back and you don't. We just sort of looked at the space and um, and kind of cherry picked the stuff that needed to go. And boy, did you guys find some great things. So congratulations. Well, that was our medicine cabinet. That's number six on the list. Um, Christine says, I did a tiny tidy up. Um, oh yeah, I love this. Um, bought a new polish, new nail polish yesterday. So it looks like the old one's going to be leaving. That's a great strategy. New one in, old one out. New one in, two old ones out. Even, I mean, we could bump up, right? The factor of things leaving. Um, and of course, the strategy of shopping at home first before we buy anything new. Because sometimes you find what you need. 
Um, and sometimes you don't, and then you buy it, but new one in, old one out. I love that. Oh, way to go. And I don't necessarily do the same exact category. Maybe if you bought a nail polish, you needed one, so you don't have one to go, but something else from the room, or if it came in a bag, fill the bag with something else from your home. So it's still an even swap. Um, I love that. Way to go, everyone. All right. Well, that was number six. And of course, you know, we've got a little more to chat about. Number seven is all about the top of the dresser, the top of the dresser. So whether it's like your everyday bracelets and then you just put them down and then they start rolling behind, other things can accumulate on a dresser top very quickly. So it's like, oh, I'll just put this here. And then all of a sudden it's 17 other things. Maybe you have a tray. Again, catch all, right? That was number three. Oh, I'll just put my everyday jewelry. And now it's your everyday jewelry and receipts and loose change and an extra pair of reading glasses and everything else. So dresser top is number seven on our list. And um, that would just be a matter of clearing it off. And then I actually put a sign that said, don't put anything here. You might put something beautiful and decorative. You might put you know, fresh flowers. You might put a note that reminds you nothing here, or we might just get in the habit of every evening clearing it off so you start fresh in the morning. So you're probably noticing a lot of this is about just routines, right? And keeping up with stuff. We're not doing it one time um, because we get new stuff, right? We move things around. So number seven on our list of seven hotspots is all about the dresser top. I do have a bonus hotspot that I'm going to share with you after we take a little procrastination quiz. So if you'd like to join me for a procrastination quiz, um, I'm going to read off a few statements and you let me know which one feels like you resonate with it the most. Now, when it comes to procrastination, to be perfectly honest, you might say, but wait, they all feel like they apply to me. So I'll just ask you to kind of um, on a scale, right? Which one do you resonate with the most? And if it is all of them, it won't matter. I'll give you strategies for them all anyway, but this might um, help you to understand more of a procrastination style. So if you're ready, let's jump in with a little bit of a quiz and we're gonna talk about number, the question, the first question, and this is all about, do you put off decluttering until it's like the right time, the best time, um, or you put it off until you can figure out the best way to do it? You want to research, like, should I fold my towels or roll my towels? Your expectations are like really high. You put it off until you can do your best job. So does that one really resonate with you? Or the next one, and that is, do you kind of plan to declutter, but then you get a little sidetracked? Just a little, like, oh, I could go here, but maybe I didn't, maybe over here. So um, we get started but we get a little sidetracked. So number one, we didn't really even start. We kind of planned for it. N number two, we started, but we got a little tripped up, a little sidetracked. Or the third one, and this is, just don't know what to keep, what to toss. If I'm gonna toss it, where should I toss it? There was a great question that came in about that. We'll circle back to it in a minute. So you're ready to declutter. You would do it, but you're just unsure. Like, should I start here? But I found this to go, but where should it go? Should I keep it? If I let it go, who should I let it go to? Is it a recyclable? I don't know. Maybe I should hold on to it. Maybe I should sell it. That kind of a thing. So do you tend to put it off? Because we don't have an answer to that question. Or the last two, and this is, do you declutter? You put it off the decluttering and you declutter right before you absolutely have to, which is usually when companies arriving or you have a repair person or like um, you're you know getting a new refrigerator delivered and you knew you probably should have decluttered the, the walkway and the entryway and stuff, but you'll do it the night before because you've got that deadline. So put it off kind of till that last minute. Or the final one, and again, you, you know, you kind of maybe can see yourself in all of these, but which one's really striking um, that deeper chord? And this one is gonna be all about Oh, I have just so much to do. I, I've got things to do over here. I'm too busy to do that. I said yes to this. I just, it's 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 not gonna happen because I'm, I needed to do this, but I also said I'll do this, but my calendar's full and I promised someone this and I already signed up for that. And oh my gosh, there's just so much going on. 
So did one of those kind of stand out for you? Uh, jump in the chat if you want to tell us kind of that one through five. Um, last minute, Cindy says, Mecca's going number two for sure. Yeah, there we go. Gail's got a five. Huma says, oh, three, four, and five kind of all feel like they fit. Sidetracked and deadlines, don't know what to keep. Nicole's got a five. Lori says, I'll do it tomorrow, but says that every day. Plan two, big at sidetracked. The last one, totally overwhelmed. Uh, Christy's giving us a five. Diane's coming in at a three. Marianne says, oh yeah, got a three. Hate putting things in a landfill. Um, I hear you on that one. We'll talk about it in a minute. Pat says four and five. Jill goes, yeah, when company's coming, which is not a bad strategy. Just plan for company all the time. And then you've got to keep it up, right? Uh, we've got a two from Laura, a four from Jean, a one and three from Yvonne. Joanne's going, just all of them. Just sign me up for all of them. Laura says a four. Never going to do it until I'm moving. Um, and Janice said two and four. Great comments. Bonnie's going, all of them. Just give me all of them. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much for uh, your participation in the chat. If you're able to, of course, it's always uh, optional. But let's take a look at what might be happening here if you're really resonating with one more than another or all of them. So here we go. Let's take a look at uh, the first one. So if it felt like you kind of put it off until it's the perfect best time and you know all the answers in advance, you research like how you should do it, the best way, the best organizers, you might fall under the perfectionist side of things. And to me, I always thought, how could a perfectionist also be a procrastinator? But then when you think about it, I think it does make perfect sense because you're waiting to get it perfect, which means you really can't get started because it will never be perfect. And so my thing for this, because I'm definitely fall in this category and I go with, I'm going to do the most perfect imperfect version, and then I can always update it later. So uh, perfectionist really um, is going to be that number one. Number two, if you're kind of in that sidetracked uh, situation, and it's like, well, I'm going to, but you never quite get there. More of that dreamer personality. You like could envision it. It sounds great, but in reality, there's a lot of work. And so maybe you'll do it later. And that's more of that dreamer side of things. Um, if you tend to fall more into the uh, concerned category, um, the unsure, the almost sometimes fearful, the uncertain category. It's because we're not sure. We don't want it to end up in a landfill. What else should we do? What if I let it go and then I need it? Um, so that just in case procrastinator, I'll just keep it all. Of course, if we wait until the last minute, there's actually like a little energy surge that you might experience by like waiting, 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 and then doing it right under the wire. And that is a strategy that can actually work, but if it stresses you out, then we might want to adjust that. And so this would be the idea of just sort of um, breaking it up. So if you know you need to have it done by Friday instead of Thursday night, right? Um, do Thursday night the last polish of things, um, but start on a Monday. So blocking it into your calendar so that you can work up to the deadline. There'll still be a deadline. And our last one is just the, uh, I think I can get it all done. I can do this and I can do that and I'll do it all. And all of a sudden we're overwhelmed. So we're the overwhelmed procrastinator if it's like, oh, but I, I started over here, but I did a little here and, uh, but I've got to do that. But I also said I was going to go to this event, but I also signed up for this and it's all the things. And so it's kind of fun. Uh, to maybe give a name to it. Um, you can actually give a name to your procrastination in the sense of you can give it like a, a true name, like a person's name. Um, and, and that way you can just kind of recognize when it's coming and it's like, oh, hi, you know, Jeffrey, my procrastinator type. We're not, we're not doing this today, Jeffrey, so long, you know, and, um, and make it maybe a little, a little corny, but a little fun. It doesn't always have to be a chore. So you might want to name that procrastination style. Um, if you do want to, and you're going to tell us the name, we'd love to see the name you come up with. Mecca's going, uh, Helen, I like it, right? So picking out that name and um, that way you can identify it. You can recognize it. You can almost see it. And then you can say so long. We're not doing that today. I'm changing it up on you. So kind of fun. We had some questions come in, but I do owe you that bonus. Um, area that is a clutter hotspot. So I'll share that with you now. Then we'll move into the Q&A. And here we go. That bonus hotspot area that is often overlooked is our everyday bag or wallet. 
So whether it's a tote bag, a handbag, a purse, a wallet, a you know work bag, a laptop bag, um, a book bag, all the bags, we tend to have that bag that comes and goes with us when we come and go. Um, but then all of a sudden there's like half a sandwich on the bottom and then some receipts and loose change that gets heavy and a pen that doesn't work and a stretched out hair elastic and all the things. And so um, again, what can we do here that on a regular basis is gonna be easy to maintain? Maybe you add in one or two smaller bags, um, kitchen Ziploc bags, extra makeup bags, little zipper bags, some sort of a bag so that you know, oh, if I'm going to switch bags, this is all my stuff. Maybe it's a cord for a laptop. It's got everything in it. It's safe. It's protected. It's less dusty. I tend to use one of those little um, sheets that comes off of a lint roller just to pat into the bottom of the bag to get all that extra lint off that usually doesn't come out and um, just freshen up the bag. So small bags inside the big bag can be helpful if it already has pockets, designating this is the thing that only goes in this pocket. This is the thing that only goes in this pocket and taking those few extra seconds, even when you're busy and it feels like, oh, I'll just throw it in and deal with it later. Oh, nope, catch yourself, right? Right in the moment, put it where it belongs because on the other side, you'll save so much time. Um, otherwise things are lost, they get broken, you have to buy them again, it's waste money, it wastes time, all the things. So that is our final bonus area, if you can relate to that one. And let's jump into our Q&A portion. So this of course is a webinar and it a, runs a little bit different sometimes. So there is a Q&A feature. And so you're welcome to jump in in the Q&A part. You'd also be welcome to drop your questions into chat. And we have a few questions from earlier that we're gonna circle back to. And uh, Joan's saying, but what about my messy car? Yes, Joan, add it to the list for sure. And the way that I've been working with mine is that every time I fill up with gas, there's often um, a garbage can right there. So trash goes out and I have one bag. It comes and goes from the house and everything from the car comes in at the end. And that way I'm not missing my extra bags, my reusable bags, my you know coffee cup or my water bottle, all the things. So yep, Joan, we're adding in your messy car. I love that. Let's take a look at, um, oh, Joan gave us a number five. She was letting us know. All right, so a couple of other questions coming in and everyone's wanting to know about paper. So yes, let's touch on paper as well. It seems like a very common category. All right, well, um, let's take a look at some ideas. And Nicole asks about dividers and do I have some favorite places where I get them? So, uh, you know, you're looking at the reviews. I will just say in general, my favorite style of divider, wherever you get a drawer divider, is the spring-loaded divider that is just the divider. It's not the entire um, like box with the lines in it, right? Because what happens is if I wanna move it to another drawer, it might not fit. Plus you can use those dividers to make it super customizable and you're not wasting space by putting in a whole organizer because it's got sides and everything. It's just the spring loaded dividers. So that's my favorite style. Um, wherever you would shop for organizing supplies, I would say um, you can head to my website, which is jamienovak.com. And on the homepage, all the way down at the bottom, there's a little heart. And those are my favorite things. And you can see the ones that I use in my own home or use with clients. So I hope that helps. Um, Galena's asking about books. And that's such a great one because, I mean, libraries can be so inundated with books. There was a time when they weren't taking them. So many of them haven't started up again. They're still trying to catch up. And so there are little libraries and you can go to, there's actually a website that by zip code shows you the little libraries. And if there's one or two in your area, you can stock a little library. You can certainly schedule a pickup with donationtown.org. And Maggie asked about all the resources. So great news. I've compiled a very lengthy list. Um, there was also a question from Rich about finding things to sell um, as opposed to selling them yourself. So again, at jamienovak.com, right on the homepage um, towards the bottom, there is a little area that says um, lists. And when you click that, it's going to give you a very lengthy list. I think it's about 150 places and it's alphabetized by the item. So what you have to donate, sell, appraise, recycle will be there for you, hopefully. 
I've tried to make it pretty comprehensive. So then you can see what you can do with extras of all the things that you have to keep them out of the landfill, especially if that's a barrier to getting organized. Of course, what was mentioned is the buy nothing groups. So Patricia, you're so spot on with that. Free cycle, free F-R-E-E -E cycle, free cycle, one of the largest ones, but your town may have one. And so you could go ahead and take a look at that as well. So let me just show you what you'll be seeing when you get to jamienovac.com. It looks like this. It says my name right at the top. You'll know you're there because you'll see my picture. And then we just scroll down to the bottom. And then what you're going to see, oh, there's the daily tidy. So every day I give you a 10 minute task. You'll know it because the timer's there. Here's Jamie's favorites with the little heart. And then that list is, hang on, right here. Toss it list. It looks like a piece of note paper. So if you go to jamienovac.com, you'll see, I think, everything that you need. Marianne says, I love our town buy nothing group. Um, and I love them too, right? Even if something's broken, you just say it's broken and there might be someone that wants to tinker with it or need it as it is. Maggie asked if it's great to work with someone who's like unbiased about your stuff. Absolutely. So if you've got a friend, um, ask them, you know, keep this, toss that. But if you don't have someone that you can kind of bounce these ideas off of, go by space. Of my home, however large your home is, how many square feet do you want to give up to this category? And when you decide one shelf full, when it's full, it's full. And uh, by space, I think is a great way to, you know, do that strategy. So hopefully that's helpful. Uh, Jennifer, I actually don't have a favorite app that helps with decluttering, but if anyone else does, please jump in. Jennifer's wondering. Um, honestly, I'm just going to say for me, I'd rather do than like be on my phone because then I'm going to be doing a bunch of other stuff on my phone on the app. So just for me personally, Jennifer, I'd rather do, which is probably part of the procrastination strategy of like, I could research how to do or I could do. So for me, I certainly know what you're saying, um, but I honestly don't have a good suggestion, at least not right now. Um, let's see, Colleen says, I can't decide what to do with it. Oh, yes. Well, and here's what we can do. Just make a short list, whether it's in your mind or on your fingers, you know, I could sell it, I could do this, I could do that. And one of those ideas will probably jump out at you. But of course, donating, probably just one of the easiest. Um, of course, you know, if budget's a concern and you want to bring the money back into your pocket, but you have to put, you know, what time and energy that's going to be. Donationtown.org is a great resource. Um, and I think we're going to get that popped in the chat for you. Donationtown.org. And that's the one where you can just pop in your zip code. It works in all the states. And a list of organizations, local and national, are coming up. That's who's coming near you soon. Gives you the deadline. You schedule a pickup. You know they're coming. Now you have to make at least one bag. So that's donationtown.org. Thank you for that. Uh, flat surfaces are my biggest issue. Oh, yeah, for sure, right? I mean, they're just magnets for stuff. So you can go with my mom's adage, which was don't put it down, put it away. She would always tell us that. And it's true. Like two more steps and I could just put it where it belongs. So as long as everything has a home and the home is not overstuffed, it's easier to just put it away than put it down because you'll be able to find it again on the other side. So you might put a note on flat surfaces, nothing here. Uh, to break the habit, we set the dining room table with the good dishes. And then it was like, oh, can't put it down, put it away and kind of break that habit. But it's a big issue, I know, flat surfaces. The other thing is at the end of the day, a quick sweep could certainly work. So you can absolutely hire someone to help you declutter. Um, Alexandra, there are professional organizers like myself. I work virtually. There are organizers that can actually come over if that's something you're looking for. I do it virtually. So we'd be on a Zoom like this. And then I'm like, oh, over there. What's that? Let's do that. Um, so you can certainly find um, an organizer. Absolutely. I know there were so many questions about paper. Let's talk very quickly about it. Before we do, Gail says, what do you do with family photos? Um, there are like duplicates of the actual picture. So, I mean, is there someone to pass them on to? Do you want to spend time organizing them? Do you just want to pare down to the best of the best? But whatever paper uh, photos you have, I would label them if you know who the people are. First name, last name, because you might write mom, but no one's going to know down the line. So photos and paper, as you might imagine, can be their own hour-long programs. So we're just going to have to skim the top. I will say that if you have access to keep this, toss that. Um, what you're going to find is there's an entire paperwork chapter. It's written in checklist format about what to keep and what to toss. 
So if that is your biggest question, that's why I wrote the book, to take the guesswork out of what to keep and what to toss. Lori collectibles, I love them. I would rotate them. So bring out some for the season, put them away, bring out some more so that they're always fresh. They're always new. Um, we don't want to acquire new. We just want to bring them back out. And you're like, oh, new again. Um, you can't keep everything out all the time. It's a lot of cleaning, a lot of space. Um, so there you go. Christy says, big brothers and sisters. Yes. Now they're one of the ones that will be listed at donationtown.org when you pop in your zip code. So there you go. Joan says, her mom says what I say, and that is don't put it down, put it away. So paperwork for Judy and so many others of you, you mentioned paperwork and I totally get it. So I'm going to say the strategy that honestly is for everyone everything else. And it's just routine and maintenance. And it sounds so boring to say it, but it's the answer. So whether you're opening mail every day, you're opening mail once a week, hopefully at least once a week, so you can stay on top of things. And then the out of sight, out of mind, I get it. I use a desktop file box. You can see the one that I use at jamienovac.com under the heart, which is all my favorites. So it's a small box. It holds hanging file folders. So it's like a little file drawer that I can move around the house because it's only about this uh, deep and it just holds about 20 hanging file folders. And I use sticky notes to label the tabs. So doctor's appointment in two weeks, put the prescription in the file folder, tickets to a show, put the tickets in the file folder, recipes I'm never going to make ever in my life, but I want to save them just in case, put it in the file folder. Um, you know, homework that's due in a week, notes from tonight's program, organizing notes, put them in a file folder, bills to be paid, tax documents and receipts for when you file taxes, all the things. And then that way they're standing up, they're grouped like with like, and then the, just like everything else, it's a matter of maintaining. Not particularly fun, but a whole lot more fun when you listen to me. And if you like a 10 minute window, every Monday, a podcast drops. There's, I think, 302 episodes, so a lot to catch up on. I just tell you silly stories of my life. They're about 10 minutes long, so you can listen while you work, and it sounds like we're together. So if you were motivated by our time together this evening, as I hope you were, head over to jamienovac.com. It doesn't cost anything. Click play. You don't have to download anything, and you'll hear me start talking. So maybe that's a fun way to stay motivated. What a delight it was to join you. So many ideas. Join us in the chat if you'd like to. Give us your favorite takeaway from tonight. We'd love to hear what really struck a chord with you. What a delight it was to join you. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, well, thank you so much. This was a great program. I got so many tips for my own self, for sure. And uh, if you liked this program and you want to come back, we get to have Jamie Novak back again in November, the end of the month, she's going to be doing um, another presentation called Welcome Home, Three Steps to Create a Comfy, Cozy, Clutter-Free Home. So if that sounds interesting to you, you need to come back and register for that program as well. But I want to take this opportunity to thank you so much for coming. It was a really great program. Oh, I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Listen, we don't have to do everything, but just that one or two takeaways, right? That you're like, yes, this is what I needed to hear tonight. Um, so very excited in the chat for those of you that are going to be available. Um, we'll remind you it's going to be happening. So mark your calendar. It's November 30th at 7 p.m. Is our link live to register yet or not quite yet? Let's see. I believe that it is. Let me double check. Um, Judy's going to try those sticky notes, which we love. And oh, so many lovely comments coming in. You were um, impressed with our time together. I'm so uh, glad that you enjoyed it. Um, listen, I, yep. I know you have yes. a lot of choices as to how you spend your time. You spent an hour with us and I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Uh, how about our link? Yep. It's the link is um, going to be coming. If you go to the one, either Chelmsford library website um, and look under events, it's right there, but I want to send the right link. So if you go on there, that'd be great. Perfect. Yes. We want to get you registered for the right thing, but mark your calendar. We'd love to have you back. And then you can tell us all about what you did between now and then. So we can't wait yep. to hear about your successes. Everyone let's go set a timer. <laughs> Thank you so much for all the lovely comments. I'm reading them go by in the chat and um, so glad you enjoyed your time. Thank you. Have a great night, everyone.